Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friend, Sam Clement and Courtney Trush. I'll say hello. How's it going? Hey, John. Hey, guys. Uh, you know, listen, Sam, I, I'm going to answer that question. I'm doing just fine. Absolutely okay. doing just fine. We've got Thanksgiving coming up around the corner. We've got both my kids coming to town. Uh, sun came up in the east today, and all's well with the world. I would not be feeling that same way if I had loaded up on Bitcoin this time, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies about this time last year. Yeah, I don't think uh, you go from 60-something thousand to 16,000-ish uh, right uh, now. Well, you know, I mean, I think it hit an all-time high, Bitcoin, Courtney, uh, last November 9th at around 67,700 and some change in intraday. So yep. that's, that's quite a quite a decline and you know number of different reasons for it but uh if unless you have really been not following the news the old expression is living in a cave i don't think we people really do that um but if you really have not been following the news you probably know something about the ftx ftx yeah yeah so man sam what do you think about all i mean bet your namesake over there over there at the uh f the ftx yeah i mean you know they're based out of the bahamas and uh, i don't nice think they're place. having a, yeah nice place but i don't think they're having a ton of fun down there right now i mean it's something that you know my my thoughts on the whole cryptocurrency environment is that it you know most people agree that probably somewhere down the line this technology is going to play a role and mm -hmm. probably going to be impactful but even then you know i'm i'm not 100 percent sold on that either but the fact is I, and i've talked about this when we've we've brought up cryptocurrency in the past that it's it, it's been a benefactor of a decade plus of extremely loose monetary policy yeah. and and that's my thought on it that's my overarching thought is that it's been a benefactor of that it's experienced a run up when everything was loose, uh, when when high beta stuff was paying off, whether it had cash flows or not, and that's something that paid off. And now we're kind of seeing the, the the flip side of that. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a whirlwind ride, and that every time these bubbles kind of happen, and I'm gonna call them bubbles. Every time these bubbles kind of happen with Bitcoin, people will go. You know, it's, it's different this time. You know, why aren't you participating? Why aren't you participating? And Courtney, as you probably know, at Oakworth, we have never really actively participated in cryptocurrencies for our clients. A number of different right. reasons for it. First and foremost, our custodian can't handle them, and that's uh, that's a dead letter and they're issue. they're not regulated. They're not a, <laughs> that's you know, approved right. security. So. Yeah, so uh, we, we can't physically hold them if there was, well, physically. Or maybe. legally. Or, and so, and then also on top of that, really, as our investment committee had a difficult time wrapping our brain around exactly what is this. Is it a store of value? Is it a currency? Is it a method of exchange? You know, is it, is it uh, a fad? Is it a fad? I mean, there's a bunch of different questions that are out there. And so, according to me, an investment committee, who just had a difficult time putting their finger on the true value or their intrinsic worth, if there is any, in cryptocurrencies. How about someone like you? That's someone that's, uh, you know, maybe not as down in the weeds with uh, looking at the hard data and all that stuff. How have you felt about cryptocurrencies just in general? Um, I, am, I don't care about cryptocurrency. I'm not going to be a first mover. That is not well, my... Um, well, I would say by this point, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say, I'd say <laughs> well, you're not I, in it now. I know, yeah, and, and I'm not planning on being it. I, I, I think for me, it really does bother me that I can't see it, I can't easily access it. It's too volatile. Um, it's just not something that I'm comfortable And I also just don't have so much free cash um, with my bundle of children to be able to invest in just fun things like this. So I was not willing to take... Um, that plunge but but what's interesting about all this and what's going on right now is um you Jump know the idea. extreme kind of snowball effect that we're seeing um throughout that yeah. kind of cryptocurrency industry i mean you know ftx the latest one you're talking about out of the bahamas i mean it was one of the biggest players in the space it yeah. had yeah. the naming rights to the miami heat stadium down in south florida <laughs> i mean it had its logo on just about everything the baseball umpires buying home plate had ftx logo on, on i there. didn't know that is this not the same thing though that we just talked about last week when we talked about a company that grew too fast too quickly uh, and they well, just didn't have the base to even recover well i think the difference is um you know they're talking about possible um, fraud here um, and throughout the industry and so I think that's what makes this a little bit differently and again I, I lean on the, the possible part of possible fraud is I mean we don't really know <laughs> we yet don't, we don't know yet but is me. he considered still a billionaire I know uh, it's just the way that whole thing melted down they, I don't have, see how. they have at a minimum um, 
a nine billion dollar shortfall it's looking like and like they're talking about <laughs> anywhere that's from just, anywhere that's from hard that, to even comprehend. and they're saying anywhere from that to 50 billion dollar shortfall and that that's bigger even you know adjusting to today's dollars that's bigger than, than no. enron that's but as, bigger than but that's bigger than is, madoff i mean it's yeah but like i don't know i mean obviously your knowledge of cryptocurrency is vastly larger than mine but um if it's crypto can he I mean, does it even exist? Well, so, like, does he the, really have to pay it back? That's the difference is, um, you know, and I think the hardcore Bitcoin maximalists talk yeah. about that this is centralized. You know, they talk about DeFi, decentralized finance, and right. centralized. Mm-hmm. Uh, SBF and FTX is a centralized finance um, part of cryptocurrency, and I think that is what the uh, maximalists are pointing towards. But to me, this whole, you know, everyone, it seems like everyone, the hot thing to say now is, I believe in the underlying technology, yada yada yada. But to me, that kind of, to me that kind of sounds like it's the same thing as people saying they're fiscally conservative and socially liberal. You say it whether you believe it or not. I, I mean, well, Sam, how do you yeah, say his Sam, last I, name? Sam, I, I feel as though you're staring straight at me. When I, when, when you Is it how do, you, how do you say it's Bankman? Freed? Freed. Yeah. Not Sam Bankman. Bankman Freed. You know, it's kind of funny. A couple of things. So uh, first off is what uh, you know the. It, People talk about their rules to Bitcoin, their scarcity, all that stuff. I'm going to read you a quote by Charlie Munger, the old curmudgeon up in the... Uh, <laughs> curmudgeon uh, is uh, definitely uh, right. Yeah. It's curmudgeon. Slumped over in his lazy boy on <laughs> CNBC yesterday. <laughs> okay, this is what Charlie Munger, uh, curmudgeon in, in Omaha, had to say about, about Bitcoin or just cryptocurrencies in general. It's one thing to think gold has some marvelous store of value because man has no way of inventing more gold or getting it very easily, so it has the advantage of rarity. Believe me, man is somehow capable of creating more Bitcoin. They tell you there are rules and they can't do it. Don't believe them. What do you think about that? You know, I think... uh you know the fact that he's 96 years old. I think you got to take anything <laughs> tech-related with a grain of salt. To be quite honest, I don't necessarily disagree, but you know. <laughs> and then, Courtney, what you're talking about about Sam Bankman Freed. You know, I'm just going to read you something. It comes off of a website uh, that I've, I, I go I'm to it, yeah. uh, called Jewish World Review. Um, and I don't always agree with what this particular writer has to say, and he's a very polarizing dude. I mean, he really is. It's Ben Ben Shapiro, uh, which. Uh, well, anyone that has left a center immediately turned off podcasts right now. <laughs> but I, uh, but this is—he really doesn't touch on politics. But what he's talking about here is, I'm just going to read this one paragraph too. Uh, that said, the, the FTX dog that didn't bark. And you know, I was looking for news on FTX and came across this. I did not search out Shapiro. All right, all my caveats out the door. I'm uh, I'm fiscally conservative. Yeah, yeah. Socially liberal. Check, check. Check, check. We would do well to keep Holmes' curious incident in mind when discussing the complete meltdown of FTX, the cryptocurrency exchange run by Sam Bankman Freed, a man who looks like he emerged from a laboratory <laughs> dedicated to the manufacture of charlatans. I think that's hysterical. All right. Yeah, yeah there you go. Sure. Bankman Freed was at one point worth some $26 billion. His exchange was the second largest in the world. But he also bragged about never reading books. I think if you wrote, if you wrote a book, yeah, you screwed yeah. up. <laughs> and it should, it should have been a six-paragraph blog post. He lived in a polycule, a polyamorous semi-colony, along with nine of his executives. He wore gym shorts and T-shirts to important company events with Bill Clinton and Tony Blair. He placed at the head of human resources, the girlfriend of the director of engineering and his chief operating officer, his own intermittent girlfriend, and as, and as head of his associated hedge fund, yet another in, intermittent Girlfriend, the red flags were endless, and yet the scam continued. To me, the biggest red flag is the term "effective altruism," like they all talked about. Um, you know, they're talking about being better than other people, essentially, and and that being the the reason why their platform's better. And I think that's a red so, flag. So, so we'll according to a New York Times article, thank you for counterbalancing the, the yes, Ben Shapiro. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Actually, I'm Rachel Maddow. They were saying that Sam Bankman Freed uh, was quoted. Um, after all of this came out um, for Sunday, he said, you would have thought that I'd be getting no sleep right now, and instead I'm getting some. It could be worse. And I'm thinking, it, it's just totally different than what we saw come out of Meta where, you know, you've, you've got, you know, the CEO of the company saying, hey, this is my fault, we're laying off people, like, I'm so sorry, we made projections that weren't great. And then this guy's like, oh, I'm not. I'm not losing really any sleep. Actually, I'm sleeping better than I ever have. 
Yeah, and, so, and so that right there is billions a, of dollars. I mean, that, that right there is an enormous red flag. Uh, yes, like and he all doesn't that type of care. Stuff that I would be very, very anxious, I guess, if I were if I were not a knowledgeable crypto coin investor and just kind of dispassionately opened up a Coinbase account or what have you right. in order to play some of this game when some of the biggest uh, hitters out there are saying, I don't care. I'm not losing sleep. I mean, Sam, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm just curious why um, the New York Times put out an absolute puff piece. Um, uh, okay. And, and, and how, you know, I think it's interesting <laughs> that all this... <laughs> I mean, so many people lost their life savings. I mean, it's been shut down. You can't access your money. Employees were getting paid in this FTX coin, um, and they were able to buy equity at a discount to what the venture capitalists were, and it is wiped out. Gone. It's completely wiped out, and yet we get a, a puff piece on him that has just no nothing about it. About it is scathing. Yeah, like as I'm thinking, I mean, what what is he being charged? Like, what is the criminal aspect of this, potentially? That New York Times article mentioned fraud, crime, illiquid, stolen, hidden, criminal, backdoor, Enron, none of those words, a single time. Oh, I thought that's what you were saying. I was like, I'm not seeing any no, of that. None of okay. those. You sourced all those words in that article. I've read it, yeah. <laughs> And he made a list. <laughs> no, no well, I know. I'm asking. So, so you're saying Alabama that he Bernie was. Madoff, you're saying that he was. Oh, come on. He was changing. He was, I guess, projecting um, growth that wasn't really there. He was reporting. Well, growth he was, was also there. funneling money out of the exchange, customers' money into his quote-unquote hedge fund. Probably because he knew it wasn't worth anything. Well, no. He was using. <laughs> he was leveraging other people's money without their consent. Yeah. That's fraud. Oh, you said it. No, I mean. <laughs> it seems like that would make it into the article, don't you think? <laughs> you think. No, but I mean, it's. Uh, I, I guess what's always been kind of curious for me about cryptocurrencies just in general, and Bitcoin gets uh, gets used, gets called, is almost a proxy for the entire uh, sector or industry or what have you, is when you believe in it, man, you are all in. Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 they call them maxis. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you're 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 all in, and there are people out there who are probably all in. They just think that we are just the biggest numbskulls on, on the face of the planet. However, if you don't get it, you really don't get it. And so, I mean, guys like Charlie Munger, even Alan Greenspan, I mean, so they're throwing a bunch of old dudes at, at you. But uh, a couple of guys have been around the block a, a few, a few and times. Yeah, Maynard Keynes. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> uh, but I mean, it's hard to kind of. I mean, understandably, it's hard for people to kind of grasp exactly what we're talking about here. Yeah, you know, what exactly is is a Bitcoin? Right. Why are there only some twenty three million or whatnot? But we can divide. We can divide the. The bit Bitcoin down into Satoshi's, right? Yeah. Down to how many? I oh, mean, trillions? Several decimal places. Yeah, yeah so. several decimal places. And then at some point, we can divide those down even further than that. So as you know, Munger was pointing out, yeah, you might not be able to create more Bitcoin, but you can create more sure. little, little pieces of Bitcoin okay. with which to uh, sell and trade. But it does bring into question, really moving forward with everything that we've seen, particularly over the last 12 months, these boom and bust cycles with cryptocurrencies just in general. What do you guys feel is sort of like the long-term prospects for cryptocurrencies? Are people going to continue to buy them the same way? They're going to continue to view them as a legitimate alternative to dollars, yen, euro, British pounds, what have you. People going to you know, think it's going to be the next big thing? Or is this going to kind of fade a little bit in the background as a place where kidnappers and people from uh, rogue countries can spear their money? Yeah, I mean, look, and I'm not the biggest expert on cryptocurrencies, but I think the the consensus belief, like I said earlier, that the underlying technology is going to play a role down the road. And I, I, I kind of want to ask why. I mean, you know, a lot of the reasons people talk about instant transfers, all this stuff, I, I don't view that as completely necessary to be on the blockchain i mean we're seeing companies like you know card payment companies now visa mastercard what have you i mean the the rails of essentially all payment right now i mean consistently getting better bank transfer systems are con consistently getting better and so i think not viewing it as a slam dunk that cryptocurrencies and blockchain is going to have a place i think needs to be at least a part of the discussion 
Well, I mean, how could I how could I disagree with you on that? And but even so, I mean, even the Federal Reserve and the, and the Treasury is talking about a crypto USDC. dollar. Yeah, US. And uh, or a digital dollar. I'm I'm trying to think of myself. And, and please, I mean, educate me on this. How's that really any different than what we currently already have? Right. Exactly. That's and that's what, what I get at you. is, and I understand the underlying technology of how it would transfer and move around is different. It would still be backed by the same um, nothingness that our dollar is currently backed by. Um, <laughs> Mr. Cynical. Yeah, exactly. 2022. But, I mean, what's that going to change? I mean, it's not going to change. I mean, the dollar is, like you said, it's already essentially on a digital platform. So if, if, we cre- if, if we create the digital U.S. dollar for ease of transfer, it's, I don't think it's all that terribly difficult to transfer money around anyhow right, right. now. Um, I mean, Venmo, I, stuff like that. I mean, it's I don't even hold cash like you go to the bank or anything like that. I mean, you could seriously go to a store and you just tap your watch or whatever, and it's it's gone. So what's It's virtual, the, virtually digital now. Right. So it's the only intriguing part of crypto is the fact that it's not regulated, but then to make people more confident in it, you'd have to regulate it, which then takes away the luster of it altogether. Courtney, I'm torn when you actually when you make sense like that. I, uh, it's rare, <laughs> right? <laughs> Can't disagree. I am actually. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, let's face it. When you take a look at this, I mean, are you going to buy cryptocurrencies no. as a currency? No. We'll not. Are you going to go to Sam's and load up on the sausage that your family likes and, and buy, pay with and, it with crypto and, 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 and buy that creamer which you like so much? Yeah. Are you going to pay for that with cryptocurrencies? But I'll, I'll, I'll also add. <laughs> yeah, no, no, because they don't accept crypto. The, to, okay, two of the major arguments for it. <laughs> I take back the nice things I just said about you. <laughs> two of the major arguments. One are that it's a store value. Well, it can't be if it fluctuates the way that it does. And, and exactly, it, going up as much as it went is not a store value. No, that's a speculative investment. You don't want if something is a store of value. If the U.S. dollar went up twenty fold, that's not a store of value either. Well, it's just because it's, it's short term awesome, but long term it's going to come back. Right. Down. That's that's the same thing as deflation when your currency essentially is going up like that. So on the on the flip side of that, if you're talking about it going up over time, why would anyone want to spend it? Well, that's that's, that's what, what deflation is. That's that, the problem with it. Is it incentivizes people to not spend. Right. And that's a bigger problem than inflation, and that's part of why we're experiencing the, what the Fed's that, doing now. And that's what I could never gr- uh, grasp about it. You know, people say this is going to be an alternative to the U.S. dollar. Well, if this is the next big thing, greatest thing since sliced bread, all that type of stuff, it's probably going to go up in value. So why am I going to go buy a, an immediately consumable thing like a pizza or even a depreciating right. asset like a car with something that I think is going to go up in value? I'd much rather take these worthless Dollars. Dollars, which are going to depreciate almost by definition because they're worthless. I'd much rather buy pizzas with those as opposed to something I think is going to go up in price. Right. So you would relate cryptocurrency in your scenario right now to like a block of gold. You're just going to put the gold in a safe deposit box. I mean, You're not it, going to touch it because it's going to go up in value. I mean, I wouldn't look at exactly gold, but yeah, but you're... you're, you're Analogy, yeah. No underlying cash flows. Yeah, the, no underlying the, cash flows. No the dividends. Value, apparent value is. I mean, for in the most part, the, eye of the holder is yeah. mostly the scarcity <clears throat> and them. So it's not about it being a currency. It is just a, a investable asset. Depends it's just ultimately. If ultimately, in my estimation, there'd be people around the world that would take immediate exception with that and are are throwing their phones into the river of listening to those. But yeah, that's how that's how I would view it. Absolutely view it. And with everything that's going on, uh, really with FTX and Sam Bankman Fried and others this year, and watching Bitcoin go from close to 68,000 on November 9th of last year down to less than 17,000 here today, or heck, we got, in, got in, in to even the 15,000s, that's a pretty big erosion in your balance sheet if yeah. you're all in. Yeah. So if you, let's say that you had a hundred, or I don't even know, let's just say you have a lot of. In, money in crypto right now would you jump ship or would you hold on oh, I, if i if i'm you know my my joke with anything that crashes is if you liked it at the really high price you can, probably you're gonna love it yeah. here so and, you just keep buying in yeah, i mean oh, that, maybe not keep buying in but if i bought some that much and i'm already down this much i mean with most things i probably wouldn't sell <laughs> yeah i mean I, I, and, I, I, and i'm with sam on this if i'm all in where i've, I've put all my money or substantial portion of my assets into 
this asset class or this type of security. Yeah, I'm viewing this as a long term, a marathon as opposed to a sprint. I don't like what's happened. It might have changed my lifestyle a little bit, but I'm not looking to sell at what I what I perceive to be the bottom. Right. However, if it ever got back to forty <laughs> to be thinking about getting back out. And so yes. that's where I think you probably have some people who have changed their mind on that. I'm not selling now unless I have to, uh, but uh, I might yeah. not uh, yeah. might not be willing to hold it the next time it does all this crazy And, and I'm not saying it's going to go down further, but, I mean, the historical drawdowns that cryptocurrencies have had, I mean, it can go down lower, just like anything can. But you got to think, you know, say it's, something's been down 80%, for it to go from being down 80% to being down 90%, you're wiping out a, a massive chunk of the, the value well, that you and, still and have. Well, the thing there. is, I, I guess ultimately, what's, and Sam and I have talked about this, what's ultimately going to happen with cryptocurrencies just in general is at some point after all the shakeout and all that stuff, there'll be a few of them left. People will continue to buy them for a variety of reasons. The technology is is unique. I can't, can't explain it, but... Uh, you know, it's out there, um, and people have bought, bought into it. You'll probably be left with a fistful of primary cryptocurrencies, but, you know, all the ones that people kind of created and just thought money would flock to it. Shiba Inu comes to mind, Dogecoin, all that type of stuff. Polkadot, uh, Pol- Solana. Yeah, I mean, there's just a, a ton of them, all that type of stuff. We'll prob- we're probably seeing the end of that sort of go-go days where people are just blindly throwing money at the asset class, and it's people will be a little bit more perhaps reasoned were educated before they get into the space. I hope so. Makes sense, yeah. All right. Well, guys, we always love to hear from you. Also, if, if you have any comments or questions, please, by all means, let us know. You can always drop us a line at tradingperspectives at oakworth.com, or you can leave us a review on the podcast outlet of your choice. As always, if you're interested in reading more or hearing more of what we have to say or how we think, please, by all means, go to oakworth.com, take a look underneath the Thought Leadership tab for all kinds of exciting information. For that, I'm going to give you guys a last chance to say something awesome on this topic. That's all I got. <laughs> That's it, John. That's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care.